Hey, Dr. Mike here. What form of magnesium is best for you? Stay tuned to find out. You're listening to Live Foreverish, a show dedicated to helping you live just a little longer. Here's your host, Dr. Mike and Dr. Crystal Gosser. All right, welcome to Live Foreverish. Uh, so, magnesium. I, okay, Dr. Crystal, I, it, it's so important that we have this conversation with people, right? Right. It's and this, and I want everybody to write up right off the bat. This is not a show about the benefit necessarily of magnesium. I think a lot of people already know they need it. Mm-hmm. Blood pressure, sugar control, metabolism overall. Three hundred. What is it? 350 Over 300 enzymes. Enzymes yes. use magnesium, right. right? From the brain to the heart to the muscles to the nerves. Da, 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 da. Yes. <laughs> so it's not this. So we if people get that. And, and most people have probably already been told by their doctor or nutritionist, you need more magnesium. Which, by the way, most Americans do. They do. The, right. the latest research, every time they do these population analysis of nutrient intakes, magnesium low, falls low, low. short. Low, the last one was like, what, 48% of Americans don't get enough or yes. something through food, supplements, whatever. Yeah. yeah. So it, it's, 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 it's critically important. But I, what we want to talk more about is it's confusing. It is. Let's be honest. It's, con- it's confusing for me. And I mean, I've been doing this for years and years and years. Absolutely, Dr. Mike. Um, as a nutritionist, sometimes it gets confusing. You say, wait, what? How many? Which, what, what, what form? <laughs> which wait, one much, is that? Yeah. I've never heard of that one. How much? Do, what's the dose? Right? I mean, so mm-hmm. there's so many questions more about how to kind of take it. So so think of this podcast kind of as a buyer guide. Yeah. To magnesium. <laughs> it's great. I do want to mention one other thing, because some people, I think it's so important you should supplement with it. I do. I think... Um, you, there's definitely a magnesium nutritional gap, mm-hmm. especially with the standard American diet. Right. Yeah. And research shows that the the content in our soil is declining, the magnesium content. I'm glad you brought that up because the, because the counter to what I just said for a lot of people who are eating healthy is that, mm-hmm. well, I get plenty of magnesium rich f- fruits and vegetables. Do you? <laughs> Unless you're getting it from a farmer that you know that soil is really good and healthy, I guess I don't know. Right. Yes, but if, so if you're getting at a, if you're getting your fruits and vegetables from a standard market in the United States, probably not all that rich. Probably not. And then if you, even if you are, then if you're dealing with stress, oh, forget that. <laughs> stress just wipes out magnesium. It wipes it out, uh, and then you're wondering why you know you are experiencing heart health issues and you're having trouble managing your blood pressure and yeah. I, so I'm gonna, forth and so on. I'm gonna, it's a cycle. Yeah. It becomes a vicious cycle. So I'm going to, I don't listen. I got, I, this is a Dr. Mike ism and it is, it is based on um, a reference. It, mm-hmm. It's based on a, uh, a pretty famous physician, but I'm not going to get into all that. I'm just there. This, this, this physician Years and years and years ago, I, I, I'm going to say maybe in the 90s, 2000, early 2000s. Mm-hmm. It's hard to believe 90s seem is long time ago, right? What is that? What's it happening? Just yesterday. I know, but anyways, um, he had this kind of cool graph following the the data about uh, the intake of magnesium for Americans mm-hmm. and, and how it's dropping over the years, right? And he correlated that to the rise of things like pre diabetes. Um, you know, stage one hypertension, not, not mm-hmm. the, not the end stage one, like just like the beginning yeah. of these things. And, and those lines cross, it, it was really interesting, like right around 2005, there's this interesting intersection. And at that point, magnesium is too low. And these other things start to rise higher uh-huh. than they should, the uh-huh. prevalence, right? Yeah. So he made this whole point that, and again, all of that's multifactorial, right? But magnesium is definitely playing a role. I think that's a safe way to say that. I like that, Dr. Mike. Interesting, you know, right? It, we we are seeing that correlational data. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just correlation, not causation. We talk about that, right? Right. So, but anyways, let's get back to the buyer guide. <laughs> 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 Dr. Chris and I can just go up on these little tangents. Right. right. Buyer guide. So the first thing we wanted to talk about was the different forms. Right. Yep. One thing to to know, you always see magnesium combined with something. Right. Um, you hear the names magnesium oxide, magnesium chloride, magnesium sulfate, magnesium citrate. Yeah. You know, we'll go over some of those different forms. And uh, the reason being is it doesn't even occur as a standalone mineral in nature. It's always found in nature combined yeah. with something. It's just 
yeah. you know, reacts well with with other well, and, elements and, or and it helps with absorption in too, mm -hmm. right? You know, yep. and so in nature, you know, when you eat a um, you know leafy greens, for instance, a lot of mm -hmm. magnesium there. It's not you're not eating magnesium. You're eating magnesium. I'm um, usually like a, a an, or, an organic form, like yep. a citrate or something mm -hmm. like that. Uh, now that doesn't mean once you get it into your system, we do like to measure what's called elemental magnesium, right? We'll right. talk about that. So magnesium in supplement form, in food form is bound to something and, and that's all about absorption. That's one part of it. Yeah. But the other part is releasing that magnesium and that's called elemental magnesium in your yes. system. That's important too, because these different forms are different in that as well. Absolutely. And, and so we'll kind of look at those because um, I'm happy you brought that up, Dr. Mike. So when we say magnesium always is always combined, when you see these different combinations, some of those combinations, the percentage of magnesium in that combination is higher. Right versus other combinations but but higher higher magnesium in those combinations doesn't always mean more elemental magnesium at the end in your cells and stuff right because some right. some sources may have less but they give up the magnesium better right right so Absolutely. i think we just probably confused more people <laughs> but, but i think we can we can look at that um and well let, let's and do this it. let's do this let's let's just let's clear up make sure that the audience the listening audience really is following this right okay in nature or supplements, magnesium, and people on YouTube can see me. Like my fist is magnesium, right? Yeah. It's bound to something. Something's on it, mm -hmm. right? This can be, you know, whatever. We're getting into those forms, whatever that right. is. That's how you ingest it. So it comes into your gut, it's bound, bound. Mm -hmm. right? As it starts to come into your bloodstream, what you want is that, that secondary compound to release, giving you that Yes. elemental magnesium mm -hmm. that's for your cells and tissues mm -hmm. and so how how much of that release happens is different based on that that thing that's holding it absolutely was that okay does that make I sense think, i think that's okay dr mike um, i think we're following along okay i hope so so let's just get into this tell us okay so let's go back to forms inorganic versus organic help right. us with that so the inorganic is when magnesium is combined with other minerals uh, or elements that that does not contain carbon. So you can kind of think about if you go back to science school, that uh, elemental science school, <laughs> science, <laughs> science class, science class, <laughs> the elemental chart, yeah. right? Um, magnesium with oxygen, oxide, is yeah. magnesium, magnesium oxide. oxide. Yeah. Uh, if you have magnesium with chloride, chloride is is one of your elements. Then you have magnesium chloride. The same as magnesium with with uh, sulf magnesium sulfate, sulfate, also known as Epsom salt, right. and so those combinations um, have have different percentages of magnesium as well. So, for example, magnesium oxide has a very high elemental magnesium by mass, sixty one percent, sixty one percent, and so whenever you have um, a combination that's giving you a lot of magnesium all at once. The absorption of that is a little so it, it kind of changes how that magnesium is absorbed yeah. because there's so much because you can magnesium only absorb going, so much right so some, there's yeah. exactly so um so 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 magnesium oxide has a it, it can it can give your body a lot of magnesium however you have to consider the absorption is going to be a little maybe lower than some other form right okay. so a little lower bioavailability because so much magnesium is given to yeah. you. It's like the body can't deal with it. That it's right. too much at that. Yeah. And then you have organic, of course, when the magnesium. Well, wait, before you do that. Yes. So the, the main three, magnesium oxide, mm -hmm. magne magnesium chloride, that doesn't have as much elemental magnesium, about 12%. 12%. And then magnesium sulfate, again, under or uh, inorganic, mm -hmm. about 10%. Elemental right, magnesium. Right. And we usually, the, the sulfate form, that's the Epsom salt. Yeah. Some people use it internally, but most people soak in it. Soak in it. <laughs> I, I've, ne I've never done that. Have you ever done that? I Epsom have. Salt? Actually, I did it uh, during my Thanksgiving holiday. It's, it's so funny. When it comes to like, when I ask questions like that, the pattern is always, I don't do it and you do. You ever notice that? <laughs> like whenever there's something I like. I do. It's a thing. It's a family thing in the in the. But the Moore house, my parents, yeah. we were always, oh, I need to soak in some Epsom soak salt. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Then we go to organic forms. Right. The organic forms, that's when the magnesium is combined with the carbon containing compounds. Uh, so these are the magnesium citrates. Yeah. Like the, you know, citric acid. 
uh, the magnesium glycinate, malate, that's that form that's um, found in things like fruit and wine. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you find these, you know, more organic organic uh, components in your food is right. where you would find some of those. You got magnesium three and eight listed here. Well, you're right. Yeah. That's a that's a mm-hmm. great. We'll talk about that coming up. And then magnesium tarate. Right. Another good one, like for the cardiovascular mm-hmm. system and stuff. So again, you so so that's that, so so for the listening audience, that's that's like step one is to understand there's organic and there's inorganic, right? Mm-hmm. You got the the inorganic forms. Um, uh, and, and you might just based on what we said, ma- magnesium oxide. That seems like the winner because it has sixty one percent elemental magnesium. Most of these others are more around twenty percent, ten percent, something like that. Right. And the organic forms are typically more water soluble, typically a little better absorbed. So that so that's a good example. So let's talk about that for yeah. a sec, right? So magnesium citrate is not going to absorb as well, right? Yeah. Um, and although it could give your body up to sixty one percent elemental magnesium. Right. It's no, not no, gonna... that's oxide. That's what, oh, what did I say? What Citrate. Did I... I'm sorry. Oxide. Ah, let's start over. <laughs> Magnesium oxide, mm-hmm. inorganic, looks mm-hmm. like that's that's your winner. Yeah. But not necessarily because you may not get all of that 61 percent because it's almost too much. Yes. Versus, say, something like or uh, what is it? Um, the citrate. Mm-hmm. That's 16 percent elemental magnesium. You're going to get most of that. Right, because it absorbs better. Yeah, it's water soluble. Mm-hmm. So don't you don't get don't get too thrown off by when people are talking about the percent of elemental magnesium. Right. Okay. Yep. Woo. So now let's um now that we kind of have a, a baseline here for the different forms, why you see them combined. That's how they occur how, in nature. That's how it is. Yes. That's, that's just how it is. And those different combinations have different solubilities. They have different amounts of actual magnesium, depending on which combination you choose. Right. And that's why um, why you find people or, or different uh, manufacturers kind of providing a variety of these different different the, forms and yeah. that's why they also have different effects in the body right so here, here's here's how we're going to do this yeah. right so we've kind of chosen what are what are four big issues or mm-hmm. things that people are concerned about mm-hmm. right overall whole body health for sure yeah. right just general magnesium supplementation boost fill that gap yeah. that kind of stuff bowel movements doo-doo, that's big yeah that's big uh brain health big mm-hmm. And stress and relaxation. Yeah. So those are kind of the big, I would say, main reasons why people would want right. to take magnesium. Yeah. It's kind you of could, high you, level category. We could throw in blood pressure. Right. So, you know, I thought about that, Dr. Mike. And then I said, well, would that be whole body? Well, no, let's, let's, put, be, let's, put, let's put blood pressure we'll at the end. blood pressure in the Because I know there's the one, there's a form you like mm-hmm. for that. All right. So, so okay, if you're looking for... Um, magnesium for whole body health. What what are the what are the forms that are going to be best there? So you find the magnesium citrate, magnesium oxide uh, are kind of those general forms. You also have uh, magnesium succinate. So when you just think general magnesium overall, you know, I, I just want to make sure I am adding an adjunct to what I get from my diet. Yeah. So you're, you're looking at, based on your diet, Mm -hmm. you, the dose for adding this in, Mm -hmm. uh, in a supplement form could be anywhere from 300 to 500 milligrams. Right. That's going to be kind of the range. Yeah. This is really just to fill in the magnesium gap. Yeah. Gotcha. There. So that's whole body citrate oxide succinate three to 500 milligrams. And I would like to say for whole body, you want to consider kind of a combination preparation. Okay. Um, and that way you can get you're elemental kind of, you're covering more, and yeah, absorption. Yeah. So now you're you're getting the best of well, both worlds when you citrate understand. Citrate oxide. Right. So the citrate's going to be really absorbable, will absorb a little bit uh, faster, more bioavailable. That oxide kind of comes in because there's so much magnesium, you may kind of slowly release more of that magnesium over into time. the bloodstream over, over time. time. So the citrates so nice maybe combo. Yeah, citrates kind of like I'm here. Here's your magnesium now. Yeah. yeah. Oxide's like I'll give it to you here and there. Yes. Yes, you know, that yes. kind of thing. That's great for whole body. All right, bowel movement. Yeah. Yeah. So you can see this is wait. So with the whole body, we said about three to five hundred milligrams bowel movement. You can still use those same forms. Yeah. 
but at it's, the it's, higher it's dose. dose. It's the dose, yeah. It's yeah. the dose yeah. because the more magnesium you take, as you mentioned, kind of those those transporters and, and how that magnesium gets into the bloodstream from the digestive tract, there's only a, a certain amount that can get in at any given time. Whatever else is remaining draws water yeah. into the bowel. Yes, yeah, and it pushes it up. And that, that kind of loosens up any stool you, that and you and you feel better come out yeah and and you can have a good bowel movement and that's so that's going to be anywhere up to about 1500 milligrams 1500 right? milligrams and we, we have to say up to because everybody's different up to and I, and so in some preparations that are just straight laxatives that you spine Ooh. you know if you go to your local uh pharmacy they can be higher than that, right? High, I mean, yeah. you may see 3,000 milligrams, 5,000 milligrams, like the little green I just bottle. Don't, you, you, <laughs> don't, I don't think I would do that. Well, if you're bound, well, I, you no, will. But, no, you because to, he, it's a relief. You no, know, as a clinician, it's always start slow. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm start low and go slow, meaning start at the 1,500. Not yeah. quite working. 2,500, like, like yeah, C, you know, it. but if you, if like, what if your body only needed 1500 milligrams and you're slamming a 5,000 oh, milligram, you're going to, you. you're going to be like seeing it before and it's not a good feeling. I mean, like you, it's yeah, <laughs> I will say now about bowel movements. Um, it, yeah, I think that, I think you got the right forms here. Citrates, oxide. Those are the mm -hmm. key ones. Whole body health, bowel movement. There are a couple forms that really don't affect the bowel as much. Right. Yeah, and we're going to get into that, but I, I'll just real quick, magnesium three and eight. If you're doing that and we're going to talk about that coming up with brain health, that's not going to really help you move too much. And I've heard um, magnesium tartrate is not quite ah, as rough on the bowel. Yeah. <laughs> so if you're doing one of those two, don't think, well, let me just up the dose of my magnesium three and eight. Mm -hmm. You probably still aren't going to get a great. Speaking of magnesium three and eight. Yes. Brain health. This is all about, this is your brain magnesium and research shown to improve cognitive and executive function in a randomized placebo controlled trial. Also shown to support short and long term memory. I need both. <laughs> I, I, need to, I need the short I just, for sure. Yeah, short is short gets, it, it gets, especially when you get in your 50s. You just, you just wait. Uh oh. Short gets a little wonky. Well, long term seems to be solid. Short, okay. short is a little, yeah. So yeah. I need to start my three and where, eight. Where are my keys is a very common thing when you get in your 50s. <laughs> or you start doing that thing, uh, um, what did my friend say once? He said, I'm so good at forgetting things when I, he's like, when I walk into a room, or no, no, he said, he said, I can actually forget what I'm doing when I'm actually doing it. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I'm like, oh, we may got to get you some help there. All right, yeah, so magnesium, about three and eight, um, I will say, Magnesium. Most people have a whole body magnesium. Not, we, I'm not not deficiency or sufficiency. Just low levels. Mm -hmm. right? You got to be careful with those words because yeah. those those are specific clinical right. words, right? Um, um, but most people are kind of low. Let's just mm -hmm. say magnesium. But but you know where they're really low, the brain. Because when yeah. you're eating the foods that are rich in magnesium, maybe you're taking a magnesium citrate or oxide mm -hmm. supplement or combo. Mm -hmm. It, some of that will get in the brain, but not as much as you think. The right. brain kind of still remains starved a little bit. That is true. That's where magnesium L3 and it comes in. It has been shown to increase magnesium levels in the cerebral spinal fluid. That was hard to get out. Cerebral spinal fluid, <laughs> significantly higher than these other forms. Yes, we have seen that in the research. Another one. So that's brain. Oh, one thing we need to say, dose. Oh. 2,000 milligrams. Of that magnesium L3 <laughs> and 8, but... But it gives a lower elemental. Much lower. So only about 7%, 7.2% 7. Yeah. of that combination is going to be so like, magnesium. 130-something like milligrams. One, 144, 144 out of a 2,000 yeah, yeah. uh, milligrams. But that's okay. That that doesn't... Don't throw let that, let that throw you off. Mm -hmm. It's that dose at that elemental level that has been shown to get into the brain and help. Exactly. Right. Okay. All right. Last one is um, stress and relaxation. Relaxation. Magnesium acetotorate. Ooh. Now let's talk about that aceto first. Acetyl. That aceto kind of helps to make that um, 
that amino acid taurine a little more fat loving which helps it which helps it get into the brain so that's yeah. another form that can easily cross cell membranes blood brain barrier uh, but the research with this form that we have is more of helping with relaxation nice. and feelings of calmness yes uh, so this and what we're going over dr. Mike um, we're not saying that three and eight may won't have beneficial effects for calmness but yeah. this is we're, we're going over clinically what yeah. we're seeing the benefit for this specific form the torrent for right, right. calmness and relax relaxation about and seven, stress management about 750 milligrams of this form right mm -hmm. that's going to be about good for for stress and relaxation i know a common question at this point right so you know when you look at this list mm -hmm. a lot of people out here out, out there have all this <laughs> I mean, let's True. be honest, right? Like how, like how, how do they, how do you kind of begin to, can I, can I do, uh, you know, let's say I do need some bowel movement and I want to, I want to do a magnesium citrate or oxide, but I'm also interested in the brain and the three and eight. Can yeah. I do a combination there? Right. And the answer to that, and this is, listen, I don't know if there's a definitive answer to that anyways, mm -hmm. but I believe the answer to that is yes. Yeah. Um, and, and your body will tell you when you're getting too much magnesium. You know? That's it, Dr. Yeah. Mike. Um, it, the body is smart. You you take it into your bowel tolerance yeah. is what we call it. Right. So you you can up that dose until you find, you know, the next day I, you're having some loose stools, that yeah. looser than you would like. Yeah. And then, then you, you then you know, back. then you can cut back. So I, I have lots of friends and family members where I put them on. Um, a general magnesium, maybe like for bones and stuff mm -hmm, like that. Mm -hmm. But I've added the magnesium three and eight at night for brain health and nice. stuff. And yeah. they're fine. So there's no there's no problem there. Just the, the bowel is that thing you watch. That'll tell you. That's what you watch. And then, of course, you look at um, always. And the reason we wanted you to understand that these combinations have a, a percentage of magnesium in those combinations, because you have to not just focus on. The combo focus on it, identifying how much elemental magnesium. That, how that, much that's the key thing. Yeah. Am I receiving? That, that's why I want to mention. So our sponsor, Life Extension, right? Mm -hmm. Do tons of research, um, great protocols, yeah. copiously referenced. Here, Life Extension's position is magnesium absorption is more about quantity rather than the form. Yeah. Right. And there's some reasons they give give that, like for instance, they you know many claim magnesium citrate is superior, right? Um, because if you if you measure, uh, you can actually measure people's urine and see how much how much magnesium is coming out that way. Which means the it, that's good. It's a good sign. It means your body used it. It's now right. got it. It doesn't need it, mm -hmm. and it, you pee it out. That's actually a good. People get that confused, right? right? That's actually a good thing. Um, it, you know that you, you you those urine studies. Um, can show that more magnesium is present in the, ur uh, in the urine when you take that citrate form. However, the, the key thing is, where is that magnesium going? Where is that elemental magnesium going? And you want it in things like red blood cells and yes, stuff like that. that's where magnesium and, likes to and, hang out. And citrate is a little lower if you were to measure magnesium in your red blood cells. So you got to, it's really about that, it, it's that, that elemental amount at I the end agree, of the day. I agree, Dr. Mike, and I'm happy you brought that up because, you know, People like to say, oh, oxide is poorly absorbed or this form is poorly absorbed or this form is best absorbed. Uh, and when you just look at the data, when you measure red blood cell content of magnesium, mm -hmm. it's not about the form. Yeah. It's about that it's overall dose. How much you're getting. And that's yeah. why you have yeah. to look at elemental and, magnesium in your preparation and, and that's in a, another good point if you really are you know doing magnesium because maybe your doctor wants to help um uh, manage your blood pressure better mm -hmm. stuff that's you know mm -hmm. real stuff you got to work on mm -hmm. uh you, it, you go ahead and get a, a blood test and get it make sure it's a red blood cell magnesium test that's really going to tell you where your status is right yeah um mm -hmm. and what you'll find just like you said it doesn't all these different forms as long as your red blood cell magnesium is going up you're good to go that's right, Dr. You're, Mike. You're good to go. This is great. It was, so yeah. this, is, this is a good buyer's guide. I think so. You know, ultimately, uh, think about that dose that you're receiving. Yeah. Um, and know that you just need magnesium. <laughs> right. It's, that's so, so important. Uh, it's, 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 when we, it's what we call going back to the basics. Mm -hmm. Right. 
yeah. magnesium. It's critical, right? All right. So speaking of Life Extension, our sponsor yeah. of the Live Forever's podcast, uh, they would like to thank our listeners with a special 10% off discount at lifeextension.com. All you got to do is when you're ready to check out, just type in podcast to redeem a 10% off uh, $50 or more that you spend plus free shipping and handling. That covers your entire order. So mm -hmm. 10% off 50 bucks or more free shipping and handling podcast. That's all you got to do. And then at liveforeverish.com, tons more episodes for you to check out. Download, like, share, and comment. And don't forget to subscribe so you never miss a show. That's liveforeverish.com. I'm Dr. Mike. That's Dr. Crystal. We'll see you next time.